Greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore podcast. I'm Jeff and I'm joined as always by my good buddies Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. These jokers, they debate, deliberate the most ubiquitous aspects of a panoply of uh, topics. And this time around, it's the Mount Rushmore of gas stations. I thought of this. <laughs> See, Jeff, why did you think of this? He, I, he, saw, he saw the little, little the little butterflies flying out of his wallet while trying to fill up. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the, the cartoon symbol for poverty. Um, the uh, a little project I'm working on um, is uh, got me kind of investigating the quirks and peccadilloes and, and differences between these places that we go to do a thing we have to do usually to put petroleum in our car and then what else is there you know is there good food is there are there snacks is the bathroom uh, an apocalyptic nightmare is it okay uh, uh what else is there and and also i think um uh the differences is is, is what i just kind of kind of love to kind of explore and i guess that's what we do here so or maybe it's aspects of anyhow so mm. uh, i chose it and um so richard was on the zoom first so you go first richard all right so my first choice is uh driving off with the hose still in the car <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> right on. which is something i certainly never have done <laughs> and has certainly never cost me three hundred dollars. Oh no! Wow. Woof. Ouch! It is not. Check check your hose, everybody. If you do, if you learn one thing from this podcast, check your hose before you leave. And I am now super like your hosed. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I am like super paranoid about it, and I will g- double check, triple check, circle the car, <laughs> whatever <laughs> it takes. Jeff, Jeff is holding up on our on our video <laughs> chat. Um, it looks like the remnants of, uh, of <laughs> it's a gas station pump. Did you do the same thing? How long? How long did that hose was that with you for the rest of your college and then through adulthood? Is it did it did it go to your wedding? Was your was the hose? Something I didn't that... even get to keep the hose. Ah, nuts! I you know if I'm going to pay three hundred bucks, I should get to keep the the damn <laughs> nozzle at least. That but should no, be I would, that should be an offering since gas is so expensive. Filling stations should say, "Yeah, you can drive away with the hose in it." Yeah, <laughs> it's just for fun. What just was that experience it. like? Um, well, it was I'm trying to think. You know what it was? It was right after Vivian was born. I think it was my first day back from maternity from paternity leave, and I'm like, you know, just new dad, exhausted, yeah. just can't get to can't get any sleep, mm-hmm. having to go back to work pull into the gas station and just, yeah, was so tired. I just pumped up with gas, went into the car and just floored it. And all of a sudden I heard a thunk and looked back and there's the hose flopping around. Was it spraying gasoline? No, it wasn't because they have like those breakaway hoses. Mm -hmm. So they're made so they don't spew gasoline everywhere. Okay. Then I had to park, disentangle everything, go into the, gas station and so I said, oh sorry it took off with your pump and it the guy this must happen i don't know how often this happens but it must happen often enough that the guy wasn't like really oh my god or yeah <laughs> angry at me or anything he was just like yeah okay give me your number we'll call you whenever he fix it like you know how much it is it's usually yeah. around 300 dollars wow like, did you say dead you man. you could have put out your cigar buddy <laughs> Yeah. Never. <laughs> yeah, I turned into the guy from the birds who is yeah. like smoking a cigarette as the uh, trail of, that, of vapors is coming behind him. Wow. What? A, okay, that's a that's a big one coming out out swinging on the first round. Winfield, well, what's your? Well, that that leads to my exactly. So my first pick is um, gas stations blowing up in a movie. There's nothing more <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> I love, you know, it's the perfect place. It's just fuel that is stored. It's stuff that can explode or catch fire that yeah. is a dangerous thing that we trust ourselves to do ourselves. You know, um, I know there are some states like Oregon and I think maybe Jersey where like there are laws in place where you're not supposed to pump the gas yourself or you're not really? allowed to. Yeah. Right. So Richard, choose one of those two and move on over because you can't be trusted. <laughs> yeah. but, but, you know, like just they're just amazing movies where like um i think of robocop you know with obviously with like gunfire and um 
uh, oh, uh, what's a silly one? Like Zoolander, where the thing yeah. blows up because they're having a gasoline fight. But um, just just the idea of just we trust ourselves to pump our own gas in these these huge reservoirs of flammable liquid <laughs> to put into our cars that are com- you know it's a literal combustion engine where there are tiny explosions going off within yeah. our vehicle to propel us forward and that you know in one in every i don't know 103rd movie a uh, gas station just blows up and it's wonderful yeah there's no kind of casual <laughs> gas station scenes in movies you know it doesn't Unless it's the Uptown Girl video with some, Goomba, <laughs> some Goombas just singing and dancing around, they all got to explode if, if you show a gas station. Or they uh, got to get robbed, one of the yeah, two. Yeah. Do you think, uh, you know, this is, I, I still unplug the iron, you know, after it's done for fear oh, that for it, sure. it, it, will, will, it will somehow just torch the house to, to embers. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty cavalier at the, at the gas station. And, what? Uh, what? The move that I like the most is when there's like the trail of gasoline and then mm-hmm. someone lights it with like a, you know, like a match or a spark yeah. and then it, and it, the trail follows its way, you know, hundred, hundred feet and then the thing explodes. Um, it's, yeah. it's very Yosemite Sam when that happens. <laughs> Do, I feel like I've yeah. seen it in not just fiction, but in GIFs like a, or a video, a web video or something where somebody has. Oh, a, sure. You can, I'm some sure kind there, of emergency there, happening. There are uh, plenty of like Reddit threads um, that in like gifts of like what could go wrong, and plus, yeah. you know, some like you said, some guy with a, a cigarette dangling out of his mouth as he's pumping gasoline, and then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think that tank is a good ten feet below. You know, it's it's down there. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, there's a big hose pumping that stuff right out. Okay, uh, Matt Freddy, what's your second one? My second one is uh, based on my uh, summer job in high school, which was working as a cashier at a gas station. All right. So uh, call me an expert on this if you want. Okay. Mm. Don't really, because I worked for like three months there and it was yeah. shitty and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, but the one of the worst aspects is someone paying for five dollars and 37 cents of gas all in change (laughs) you you could just you could just see who the person you could almost tell that person before they came up if they're digging in their pockets and starting to pull change out and then pulling more change out as they're walking up it's like oh crap yeah here we go somebody's got 30 dimes and 47 (laughs) nickels or whatever the hell he has it's like, dude, I work at a gas station. Do you expect me to do math that well? <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm not Bobby Fisher. You don't. You're not going to dump these on the counter, and I'll just kind of glance at it like Rain Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And- I once in high school was was pretty broke, but I had a roll of dimes, and I knew it was five dollars, and uh, and I just handed it to the guy. I said, I said, this is five dollars, and I expected him to count. And he just said. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you're, 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 what about it? Okay, Richard. Uh, I did three months at the uh, uh, conven- uh, gas station convenience store. So it was like the, the Lawrence, Kansas equivalent of like a 7-Eleven okay. gas station. Um, was it, did you have to like turn the pumps on and off and stuff? Or was it all pretty automated? No, I actually had to, this was back, you know, this, I don't know if it was an older school gas station, but I definitely, uh-huh. it was back when you could choose to either pay ahead or pump and then pay okay when everything wasn't pay ahead so there is the occasional time where i thought somebody was gonna pump and then pay and they thought that they were giving me money to for a specific amount uh-huh and then mm. they would just keep pumping and they wanted yeah. twenty dollars and they got twenty five dollars because i was uh-huh. paying attention yeah. <sighs> it was always a big mess the other thing other than loose change that we got i got would get from time to time is people would go floating down the King's River, you know, do like a, you know, where you get in your mm-hmm. inner tube and you float down the river and drink mm-hmm. 20,000 beers. And then they would get done and they would come to the gas station and invariably they would hand me sopping wet dollar, <laughs> crumpled up dollar bills <laughs> to pay for their gas. It was just, <laughs> it was just a miserable experience because you can't put the wet 
money in with the dry money mm-hmm. and then it's going to get everything else wet. So you kind of had to just keep it out to the side until you did your money drop and then sort of just jam it in there. Yeah. Did it's any, just, uh, just don't have, they don't have respect for the cashier. How many idiots no. drove off with the pump still in the tank of their car? <laughs> oh, nobody was that. <laughs> nobody was that the idea. <laughs> nobody was that stupid. I, I have what, to say, what, go ahead. Go ahead, Richard. Go ahead. No, go, 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 Jeff. The three months I worked at the filling station did make me into a math wizard in addition, subtraction, math wizard. Like I could, I could yeah. pretty, pretty much make change like without even thinking, like without it even kind of impacting the brain, the neural <laughs> paths, but you just got so used to counting out change f- for people. Um, but mostly the price of change from a, from a refill cup of Coke, you know, of soda or whatever. That's, <laughs> right. that's mostly what, <laughs> what I could were do. You, uh, were you ever given any special instructions uh, when someone uh, inevitably uh, pumps before they pay and they take off? Was it just like, just let them go. There's no point. And were, did you have to file a report? Did you have to like, no, I don't down or anything like that. I don't think it ever Chase happened. after him with a pitchfork. <laughs> yeah, that was my plan is I was going to throw like a, my boomerang that I keep in my, <laughs> for personal protection that I kept in my little booth. <laughs> um, no, I think I was just told, yeah, if somebody pump debt dashes, you know, try and get their license plate. If you get their license plate, you can file a report. But for the most part, just kind of let them go. Yeah, so, we were. So take we it were. from me, guys. Just steal your gas. <laughs> They is there care. any way to do that now? I thought you no, always kind of okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I recall just being so swamped all the time that anybody could you could have walked out of there with the the Galaga machine. I wouldn't have known <laughs> what was going on. Oh um, yeah, that was always a panicky feeling when you had like four or five people lined up. Yeah. Ah, no, that's that's uh, that's high stress. Uh huh. I often worked the midnight to eight shift. 8 a.m. and um, there was a dog that would walk through. It seemed like 2 a.m. There was this like yellow lab that was just doing its rounds, and it would <laughs> walk through the the. the I'd see it walk through the parking lot, usually empty because there's nobody there pumping gas. So I would get on the intercom and go, "Here, boy, here, boy!" <laughs> You'd see this dog <laughs> spinning around looking for wherever that voice was coming from. And then one night the phone rang, at, and it was evidently a man who lived very close to the gas station. <laughs> Dude, you got to cut that crap out. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> like he lived on the other side of the fence from it. Good stories. Uh, so, okay. This brings me to um, one thing I just kind of observe about these places is they're just, they're multi-use. They're multi, um, they're often open 24 hours. And so they have a kind of a weird timelessness that something about the fluorescent lighting makes it seem like there's no, there's no weather, there's no time, there's no anything. <laughs> it, just exists, there. it just exists in its own vortex. Yeah. And I think it's designed to make you perceive it to be clean, to make it a place you want to come for a little bit, spend all your money and then get the heck out. Um, there's something very friendly, but cheap about in in insides of uh, gas stations. And what I think is interesting is how the vernacular has changed. Like you said, now they, they were called service stations when they first opened, because like you said, somebody would pump your gas for you. And probably because it was actually hard to pump gas. <laughs> you know, like you wouldn't know how to operate the machine. Not everybody knew these things might've been different from place to place. So but uh, I, yeah, I'm just kind of fascinated with these places and how they've, how they've changed over the years. Yeah. All right, Winfield, what's your second one? Uh, my second one is just the uh, infinite joy that you get when you pull up to the gas station and you like enter your Ralph's reward and you realize <laughs> that you've, you've possibly like maxed out at like saving 40 cents a gallon because you've held off cashing in your grocery shopping <laughs> points for so long. And then it like, you know, takes off that 40 cents from however much you're paying. And you look around, and you're just like, anybody else see this? <laughs> King of the world. Does anybody, else, does anybody else see how special <laughs> I am right now? Look at that. It's now $4.11 a gallon. 
<laughs> was 451. What do you think about that, Bucko? <laughs> you, feel, you feel like the high roller at I, the casino. I feel, <laughs> I feel like I've literally tapped into some sort of real, like special code. I wish there was a special code that you could just punch in and a cheat and code. Would, a cheat code, <laughs> but it's just this weird thing, you know. Um, gas is so expensive these days and has been for a long time. I think we all kind of have our own personal memory of like when you remember gas was crazy expensive and it was, you know, 25 years ago and it was a, you know, a dollar 11 and you're like, Whoa, what over a dollar? That's crazy. And now (laughs) you're like, yeah, you're filling out, you know, loan paperwork to get a gallon of gas. But man, that feeling of just like, and then you're like, you start doing the math, like, God, how many more groceries do I have to buy before I can have this feeling again? <laughs> What's funny is you're, those are two necessities. Um, it's not like uh, if it was like you bought some stuff off iTunes or something like that, you could get a discount, but that uh, they've got you where they yeah, want they you. Go, they go hand in hand for sure. And sometimes, you know, you say like, enter your Ralph's card. It's like 10 cents. Yeah, that's not worth it. Eh, I'm not going to apply. I'll save it for next time. As if you're still just not saving money in, in some way or another. I'll have to confess, I never figured that out. I mm. I think I tried to <laughs> enter my Ralph's card and it never worked or something like that. So I envy you the 40 cents. Uh, I had the experience the other day when I, um, I think the, I, 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 I risk running out of gas too frequently and the Needle was below E, and I pulled into the gas oh, down, station. Down, all the way down to F. <laughs> like, yeah, like you failed to plan. Uh, and I think my tank is 16 gallons. I put 16.42 gallons in there. So that's you how actually filled filled up the fuel line is what yeah, you did. Yeah, I totally did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess, uh, dudes, we are at our halftime, and we're going to implore you to uh, fuel up on the Mount Rushmore podcast to fill up your tank with the past episodes that stretch out the last six years. Um, Go back to the pre-Trump administration, um, I believe. Oh, yeah. We had plenty of jokes in 2016 about about Trump winning. Ah, Yeah, that'll never happen. Yeah, go Uh, back and listen to those. Those aged well. Yeah, and then he showed us. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, well, and he, then, you know, they always, you know, they say that he ran out of spite for like Obama. You know, yeah. Obama shamed him. But really, it was some of those early episodes. <laughs> that that really, that really really fuel podcast. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of fuel, that kept him gassed up and going was just like he put he put one of the he's never mentioned it. But, you know, that's a secret no. shame. But yeah. it kept it kept him going, kept him trying hard to like see if he could uh, keep, you know, just because he hates us so much. That's it. That's it. Badge of badge of honor. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's jump back in. Uh, Richard, what is your third? Let's talk about gas station food. Mm, awesome. Not, not, and I'm not talking about the convenience sort of like, like the chips and yeah, beef jerky and stuff, ho hos. Oh. I mean, like whenever the gas station has like a hot, like the little roller with the hot oh, dog. Oh right, yeah, I love the roller. Yeah, and the hamburgers. Yeah. If you want to show me that you're a daredevil. <laughs> you don't need to go snowboarding. You don't need to go skateboarding. Just get a hot dog from your local Chevron. Yeah. And I'll say, dear sir or madam, you have no respect for your life. And I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. What do you think? Why would why would it be any worse than like a movie theater dog or, or a ballpark dog? Well, the ballpark dog, I, 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 I trust that they have standards and that there's health health inspectors visiting on a, okay. on a fairly regular basis yeah. movie theater. I don't particularly trust either. Although there's much less grease and oil f- f- floating mm-hmm. around the premises. Yeah. I just, I just feel like it's going to be coated in a thin layer of grease just yeah. by osmosis or something. I am amazed at the volume of food service that they do and pizza. People want to buy two or three slices of that pizza. Just, I just don't understand it. It's basically, those pizzas are basically like a microwave pizza, right? Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. They're just going to throw in there. Yeah. Although I have to say, I like the 7-Eleven cookies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are I'll good. Those. That's different. Well, those, That's are, different. those are those are like okay, actually packaged. I don't, okay, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like that they're pulling them out of a 
a mm-hmm. lukewarm freezer somewhere in the back yeah. and then cooking them over low heat. Yeah. Do you think they've doubled down because uh, they've expanded their, their rolling meat product line because hot dogs <laughs> have been around for a while, but there's some different stuff rolling on those things now, like a, like a breaded thing, like a taquitos. Dog. Taquitos, yeah. Corn dogs. Yeah, they're really trying to branch out their game in the in, in the barely edible food world. Yeah. I do wonder if those, you know, if um, Clark Griswold and the food scientists uh, that he works with um, <laughs> who make uh, cereal more crunchy also somehow make that those items more potable for a longer period of time or something like that. I don't, I don't know. They have a, a, a food emulsifier or shellac, edible yeah. shellac that they can put on it. They can inject it with formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Um, okay, all right. Winfield, the well, third. I'll, I'll stay within the food realm. And it is um, off-brand like slushy machines and slushy products that you can get at. You know, we all like a good icy. Yeah. Right. Somet- sometimes you'll accept a hush puppy or a slush puppy. Mm-hmm. You don't really want the slush puppy because it's just kind of like, this kind of sucks. Yeah. And then you just start going down the list. You, you're stopping a, a random weird gas station and they're selling some weird chill thing or a freezy thing. And it's all some version of the same thing that get like progressively worse and sketchier. And I think <laughs> that just like Richard said with like food, um, it, it kind of extends to like um, – just that weird drink that is just like this big sugar high that you need to, um, you know, whether you're driving to Vegas and you need some extra bit of sugar to keep you going or on a long road trip. Um, just that really strange, you know, uh, you're going to get cherry and then maybe blue raspberry and then like some, <laughs> some daring color <laughs> and, uh, the, you know, fruit and some sugar combination that you're just like, Oh, what is this? This is like, a <laughs> gecko blast i don't even know is it <laughs> is it made of bits of little lizard have they just crawled uh. in there and, and made it green and you just taped a new sign if, if and this inv- is a, if, if this is a mango drink why is it pink yeah and it, what was the point of that invariably one of the two sides is always out of order with that little scotch that little oh, sign yeah. that's mm-hmm. on that says out of order so you really have no choice you're yeah. either you're either getting gecko blast or um blue raspberry or you're not getting it at all um you know i think the gas stations are just you have to take what is offered on the road of life Mm -hmm. sometimes these gas stations are the only thing within you know 50 miles you know you're stopping there you know how far you can go um on your tank of gas and there's these little um these little mini oasises that offer like man i'll just take what i can get whether it's (laughs) you know like um kind of weird rolling hot dogs or um, a, a slurpee that is a sketchy, yeah. sketchy, sketchy thing. There's currently in the 7-Eleven slurpee mm. flavor um, listings, something yeah. blue rocket berry uh, okay. and then Coca-Cola and cherry and brisk, brisk blood orange. That's the tea. Yeah. But there's a well, slurpee. Tea flavored slurpee. I'll pass. Yeah, that sounds like if Sigourney Weaver wanted to drink a, a slurpy <laughs> shoot. Uh, uh, Rocket League, I don't know, Pineapple Whip. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Walt Disney turned in in his grave. That's funny. Okay, okay. Uh, is this the last one from Richard? This is the last one from me. And it is higher octane gas. Ooh. Whoa. And what the fuck's the point of it? Because, in fact, there is no good reason for you, for 95% of drivers, to get anything but the 87. Because there is no tangible benefit to getting a higher octane gas than whatever your car's manual says you should get. Mm-hmm. And 95% of cars, it's 87 octane. Yeah. Don't, you, don't you ever just, like, splurge, though? Don't you ever feel like like you're high on the hog and you're like, Gonna go for the ninety-two tonight. <laughs> well, that's what I remember from being a kid was that every once in a while, you know, my dad would be like, "Well, 
car's running a little rough. I should probably get the uh, 92 octane. Just clear that out. And I'm like, that's not how that works, I don't think. And it turns out that's, in fact, not how it works. <laughs> uh, now, the the other percent, is that detergents, fillers, mayonnaise? What, what is that? What's the rest of that? Do we know what there is? I have no idea. Could be, uh, could be gunpowder. Gunpowder. <laughs> that's what makes it go go real fast. I have oh, no it's idea. Little, it's the little bits of slushy that's left over from. Mm-hmm. They just mix it in. That is I, funny. I think I once accidentally grabbed the higher octane, and then just just had to. I couldn't pay rent that month. It was yeah. like so so much more expensive. Well, and then there's the middle octane and i i definitely remember getting gas when i first got a car when i was first driving and being like well i don't think i can afford the highest octane i'll mm-hmm. get the medium octane the 89 the yeah. 89 is the most useless i can't even because if you're driving a lamborghini or something like that yes you probably need the high octane mm-hmm. everyone else is fine with a low octane mm-hmm. i don't know who the middle octane is designed for mm. I don't know who's buying that. It's no idea. Yeah. Well, uh, economically, middle the middle class is gone. Maybe that's why there's no mm. yeah. locked in consumers anymore. Okay. Okay. Winfield, what's your your final choice? Well, this one. This okay. one z- z- drove by quick quickly. This is gas. This beep, beep. Me me. Uh, my old one is old gas station branded cassettes <laughs> what what and i get to hold up one that i happen to have this one oh, is nice shows. oh beautiful classic oh cruising. that's awesome now um i was rummaging through my dad's um box like some of his boxes that he'd moved out of storage recently and um i found a bunch of goodies most of them were like paul S- <laughs> paul simon cassettes and um like old uh, stuff that he'd recorded or like when we were like real little kids. But I found this um, Cruisin' Classics Volume 6 um, put out by Shell. And I I remember seeing like shit like this all over. Like every time you'd go into a gas station, you'd see like cheap sunglasses, a rack of uh, these cassettes that you just grab. And they had this, you know, it, they're all just like a hodgepodge of the same songs. I mean, this one is a bit more like 50s. Um, based with, um, you know, Yakety Yak and um, Do You Want to Dance and uh, Get a Job. But I imagine that like 70% of them like have like Don't Drive 55 on there <laughs> or like Bad to the Bone or <laughs> any number of just songs that are just about, you know, some sort of Beach Boys song mm-hmm. uh, about a car. Um, there just must be just this whole brand of, uh, I guess this one was put out by him. CVS special products, but I'm guessing that there, there used to be a whole division that was just like the cartoons division. It was like, okay, we have these 72 songs. Let's put out another mix. Let's use uh, six of the same. No, nope, four of the same ones and four <laughs> new ones. Let's, let's give them a little treat for a number for volume five this, this time. And I just remember seeing these things all the time. And I'm sure at some point they became CDs of the same thing, mm-hmm. but, it just feels like an old brand of um, nostalgia that um, wow that I I really liked. That's pretty cool. I, one of I think it might have been one of my first acting gigs ever was an audio book that was sold only at truck stops. It was murder mysteries. There's a series of murder mysteries where like a trucker solves some mysteries or something like that. Mm. And recently I learned that trucker tapes was a genre of subgenre of comedy. Oh um, sure, yeah, the trucker tapes, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a whole thing. I'd never heard heard of them, but yeah, only sold in cassette or eight track format. Never made it to an LP because its audience will never use an LP, right? To listen to these things. So I I hope that you found out about it because you're planning on doing getting into trucker comedy, Jeff. Now that you know, you're now that you're in Florida, oh, be great. it kind of fits. <laughs> Uh, I've heard that that's, boy, if you think uh, um, some other comics have been canceled, boy, uh, the trucker it, comedy is not a very PC genre. So. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, going to um, 
going to rate, going to going to review, going to figure out which is the top four. On the first, in the first position, in the top four was not mentioned by any of you, gentlemen. Ooh. Greeting cards. The greeting cards that are only at a truck or a gas station. Usually, it's an old guy, a watercolor of like an old guy, like trying to get into an outhouse or something like that. Um, or it's a Native American uh, picture or something like that. Um, or it's a big jumbo uh, greeting card. Like it's like a, almost like the size of a piece of poster board or something <laughs> like that. Right. That I wanted to wish you the biggest birthday ever. Um, yeah. Oh, we lost it like on a, that one, Rich. Yeah, yeah. sorry, dudes. I know it's yeah. not the most ubiquitous one, but I just kind of want to get some skin in the game this time around. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so let's go with classic cruising cassettes. Um, let's, because it costs you dearly driving off with the hose in the car. <laughs> yeah. Finally and, got me one point though. So yeah, there you go. Basically paid for itself. There you go. And I would just say, I think this is, I would just choose this as a uh, public service announcement to everybody. Don't eat the hot dogs. So yeah. the, the hot dogs. Yeah. So yeah. Perfect. Great. All right, dudes. Uh, pump five is on. All right. Good. Are you going to do the thing where you try to uh, pump exactly nine <laughs> gallons of gas <laughs> and or like only pay exactly $40 <laughs> and just let the chips lie where yeah. they <laughs> This has been the Mount Rushmore of gas stations. I am always Jeff. I'm Richard. I'm Michael. We did a thing. We did a... We- <laughs> <laughs>